is serial monogamy what you would guess ancestrally is the sort of, I guess, natural state of affairs on average? No, uh, not really. Um, for humans, it appears to be something more chimpanzee-like, which is uh, polygamy in some form, either promis- promiscuous polygamy, as it, it kind of is in chimpanzees. Can you explain what that is? Um, well, it, 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 I suppose just thinking in terms of the way chimpanzee uh, society works, the, the males fight it out amongst themselves, and the, 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 the top dog then gets to mate with all the females. And this doesn't mean to say that the males further down the hierarchy don't uh, occasionally mate with females. Uh, they often do. They try and sneak them off into the bushes where nobody's watching. Um, but they don't have a sort of permanent relationship. Um, the females rear the, their offspring unaided by the males, and the males may be contributing by defending a territory or something like that, or keeping other males, strange males, away from the group. But the males aren't really particularly involved in in child care and child rearing. Um, you might get some relationships that, that um, last longer. There's a tendency for these kind of system you see this in the gorillas particularly where several females are locked onto one male so the males in those sort of contexts are functioning as kind of sumo wrestlers if you like they're the big thugs that keep everybody off off your off your back so it, it, sperm it, it, donor and bodyguard absolutely and this is sometimes known as the bodyguard hypothesis um uh, and we kind of see that in humans too, uh, a little bit. Um, but by and large, most human societies are actually polygamous. Let's say you have a male with several wives. Have you got an idea of the upper bound of that? Um, I, I, well, if you look at some of the famous uh, um, emirs of <laughs> Morocco places, or um, you know the the um, uh, emperors of uh, uh, the the Mughal state in in in, in North India you can run into uh, well, King Solomon, I suppose, is the other famous example. Run into many hundreds, if not thousands, of wives and concubines between them. Um, but on the whole, the problem is that you know if you have a few few males doing that, that means there's an awful lot of males at the bottom of the hierarchy who don't get a wife. Period. Um, unless they go around stealing them from uh, you know other cultures, as it were, and either of other the, tribes, either of those make for a pretty unstable society. It it makes for a very unstable society, and one of the consequences of this, in almost all these societies historically, is when the grand old man dies, he's got like a hundred sons, all of whom are gunning for each other um, to. Be take his place as the next emperor. So there's an absolute bloodbath usually of of rivals. Because to the victor, the spoils. To the victor, all the spoils, and the spoils are very, very rich indeed. In these cases, it's not unusual. I mean, that's basically what happened un, under um, the Saxon kings in England, and it happened in Scotland with the Scottish kings. Really, quite late, running through into the twelve. Uh, or even 1300s, um, you know, they, they were just, you would just end up with a, an almighty um, mess, basically, as different families fought over who, who was going to be the next, the next king, sometimes while the king previous one was still alive, <laughs> and uh, he didn't survive much longer. <laughs> What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for the full, unedited episode. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.